यू नीड टू स्टॉप थिंकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ टाइम एक साल दो साल तीन साल पाँच साल राइट टाइम इज योर फ्रेंड इट्स नॉट योर एनिमी सो स्टॉप पुटिंग करियर गोल्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैं एक साल में इधर पहुँचूंगा दो साल में इधर पहुँचूंगा आई ऑलवेज बिलीव इन बायस टू एक्शन राइट करो करने से सीखते हैं हम लोग सोचते रह जाते हैं कीप थिंकिंग राइट क्यूरेट योर फील ऑन इंस्टाग्राम क्यूरेट योर फील जो आप देखोगे वो ही सीखोगे सो दज एवरी सिंगल पर्सन दैट वी एवर ट्रेन वट गेट हायर Hi Devya welcome to the CNTC show how are you doing Hi Ayush super excited to be here uh freezing and cold in Delhi but <laughs> cannot wait for today and our conversation Same same I look like a freaking Eskimo <laughs> like I was I was I was in front of the mirror and I was like I can't be wearing this to a recording and I was like chuck it it's it's too cold I I I'm not taking a risk so but <laughs> definitely yeah, it's, it's extremely yeah. cold बहुत सर्दी है इतनी सर्दी नहीं होनी चाहिए प्लस वो ये गंदी वाली सर्दी नहीं होती जो वैसे ड्राई ड्राई होती है इट्स वेरी ड्राई इट्स वेरी एंड इट्स रेनिंग आल्सो टुडे सो आई डोंट नो एंड एंड यस फॉर मी टू आई एम लाइक यू नो समहाउ इन दिल्ली वो सर्दी इट एक्चुअली कम्स इनसाइड द हाउस सो इट डजंट गो अवे इट्स 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 विद यू ऑल द टाइम I'm sure people who are not from like North or Delhi, they're like, "Kya baat kar rahe?" Like, it's it's so not relatable because so I'm shifting to Bangalore. In the last month, I was in Bangalore. I was like, "This is such beautiful weather," and I'm like, yes. "These people have no clue what's going on in the North." What's it is going a- on? How lucky you are, right? <laughs> it's uh- <laughs> incredible, incredible. So I have a bunch of questions. I'm so so intrigued to know about your story, and I just want to be like, worried. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see as we go <laughs> along. I don't I don't want to I don't want to give away anything. But um, I I want to start off from the very beginning, right? Like from okay. from your college days to to uh, EY, which I think was your first job, if I'm not wrong. Then to to Safe Express. Wow. Then you uh, opened Safe Educate. Like all these like all these things in your career. Then now Seco. Um, the path is. is just a lot of different things like like people do one thing in their life you have done like multiple things right. but um i i i a i want to know what was the journey like how did you step onto this journey and b i see education as a very very core component like you're trying to disrupt education at some point kaise hua tha what was this wow are you sure you're ready for it are you sure you have the time <laughs> Yes, yes, It's... we we have all the time. <laughs> Saturday night entrepreneurs, sadly no clubbing, so I have all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> Welcome to COVID three point zero, right? Yes. I think it's been super interesting, Ayush. Um, I feel like I've reinvented myself so many times. I've been the truck girl, the container girl, and now I'm the seco girl. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, very interesting personas. So let me start. Uh, grew up in Delhi. Uh, went to Delhi University. Uh, I did my economic honors from Hindu. Uh, so I had a great sort of introduction, and I spent a lot of time in Delhi University studying economics, bunking classes, uh, debating. <laughs> uh, so really understood or at least experienced the Indian education system. Um, mm-hmm. I went to Cambridge for my masters. I studied finance there. Uh, I remember my first class. I was a good child, and I obviously had done all my homework, written all my answers, mm-hmm. uh, showed up for class. And the professor asked me to keep my books away, and he said, "Devya, what do you think?" And I was just taken aback, and I was like, and he basically questioned, "He's like, do you agree with the law of demand?" And I was like. Why am I being asked this? Uh, and uh, and okay. to be honest, I wish it was transformational. I think uh, my years uh, at Cambridge and then working uh, in the UK were transformational because I was suddenly asked to think, uh, to have my own opinion, to express it, and to defend it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't asked. I wasn't being told to do something. Right? My 
uh, my grades were then dependent on my effort uh, and not checking a box and, and giving the right answers because there were no right answers. Um, came back to India again, worked at Ernst & Young. So was in a consulting environment, which again was interesting because uh, you were seeing companies from the outside. We were hmm. looking at companies and telling them what to do. We were looking at what other companies and had done. And I was recommending uh, companies like Repsol and the Oprah. It's a very interesting incident, actually. Uh, we were speaking to Vicky O'Broy and mm -hmm. uh, we gave him a risk framework and we told him, you know, you guys are at a massive risk attack because there's no security. Uh, and I remember him saying that, hey, but, you know, the O'Broy experience cannot have frisking or a security gate before you enter. Hmm. And soon after that, the Taj incident happened that obviously changed hospitality and security completely. So, you know, it, it, it's been an interesting journey of how we expect things never to happen and how they sort of hit you and you really don't know uh, what happened. So I, I think very, uh, well, very early on, I sort of learned not to take things for granted. Uh, I think it's a good thing to challenge the status quo uh, just because kuch hota raha hai doesn't mean it's the right thing to do and doesn't mean right. ki waise hi hona chahiye. And, and really, I think the past three years have taught all of us that, right? Ki kuch bhi taken for granted mat lo. Agar someone says it's black, it can be yellow, green, pink, and it might do better or worse. We never know. Right. Um, so again, came back, uh, um, our family joined our family business, which was Safe Express. It was a transportation company, a small company at that time. It was great because I was working to set up structures and systems to make it big. And again, this is 2006, 2007. And this is when, you know, when there was a peak. Uh, I know college students today, aapko, maybe you don't know the highs, but there's economic boom where mm -hmm. everything is amazing. Job packages are through the roof. Everyone's hiring. So it's this <laughs> feeling of euphoria almost mm -hmm. uh, at that point of time. Uh, so again, there's this feeling of euphoria. Businesses are growing. You know, businesses are going through the roof. The stock market is going through the roof. Uh, we started hiring talent. We got people from the IIMs, ISBs. And in maybe about three months, a lot of them left. They couldn't understand ki ye warehouse kya hai, supply chain ka kya hai. All their mm. other friends were working in BPOs in Gurgaon, you know, getting a cab pickup drops. Uh, so the yeah. idea of a career was still uh, very nascent. You know, people didn't really understand that. Um, and, and that really drove me to set up my first company, which was Safe Educate. And that was basically born out of the premise that Ekta, if you have businesses who want people uh, and they're struggling with the rights to get the right skill sets and other end you have students who have no clue what to do with their careers right who come kar liye one year two years you don't know how to grow and there's no one really guiding you telling you so safe educate was sort of that bridge uh, where we started structuring um, this education process, I started working with the government. Uh, the PMO had set up a fund that was the National Skill Development Company. They gave us, they funded my first company. Uh, we're Marwadis and we've never really taken funding. So it was just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I was like, no, but we need that government support. So we would literally, I worked with uh, the PMO, the National Skill Development Corporation to lay down rules on or figure out you know if you have the role of a supply chain manager or if you have the role uh, of a customer care executive or of someone in a warehouse uh, what does that mean you know there are certain technical skills you need to know right you need to know certain soft skills so certain interpersonal skills certain processes uh, and a combination of these four makes you skilled enough to actually mm -hmm. do this once you know this, you can, you know, then learn the second level. Say for, for then, if you then learn all the laws, the GST, you can then 
uh, grow up and become uh, a manager, a senior manager, etc. So we really worked on creating career ladders. Uh, I worked with colleges and universities. Um, so we had we worked with over thirty universities, right from uh, the IIMs wow. to the IITs, uh, to set up sort of the supply chain courses in mm -hmm. in this in in this profile, and and not just academic. Uh, okay. So I used to it's very easy, you know, UK and US ka curriculum, you know, you would get it uh, and let's implement it in, in India. And they have HESS, hmm. which is, you know, hygiene, safety, security. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one in this country can follow those safety, security, <laughs> hygiene standards. Uh, so a lot of that had to be customized and made relevant hmm. uh, for India. Mm -hmm. um, so sort of did that across the board. Um, did something very exciting at that point is uh, we couldn't find infrastructure at that point of time we still used infrastructure uh, I know <laughs> you know in today's day all you need is a phone is a phone uh, but in is a phone but in 2015 we still had classrooms so we actually took shipping containers scrap shipping containers mm -hmm. and converted that into a mobile skill school uh, Narendra Modi inaugurated it um, in, in July 2015, wow. and we um, and we at this point uh, worked to have these skill schools that we could actually physically move that would be set up with sort of technology, um, you know, classrooms, etc. So you could go to a particular district, city, um, you know, train people in a particular hmm. setup, and, and then move it from location to location. And you would hire people from these schools that you were setting up? Yes. Um, so there was every single person that we've ever trained would get hired. Uh, again, because they had the right skill set. So you had um, 600 companies hiring from us. Uh, they still do so everything from an Amazon, Ikea, Reliance. Uh, Safe Express would be at the end of the line. Uh, <laughs> but Gati Salabri would, would literally, Indigo would... Uh, uh, you know, would be hiring people because at the end of the day, if you have talent, who knows what they do? And uh, more than that, they're motivated to want to do it uh, is amazing. So, um, and our students have done um, wonderfully well, gone on to become mm -hmm. managers, senior managers. So at last call in 2019-20, uh, Safe Educate was running about 150 schools uh, where we were training about 50,000 students. Uh, across domains and um, obviously uh, doing exceptionally well for themselves. Wow. And then Seiko happened. Right. So Seiko is a really fun story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a COVID baby. Uh, it's hmm. um, April 2020. The schools mm -hmm. shut down. And I actually contacted my co-founders, Aryanth and Ajit. Uh, crying that hey my schools are shutting down what do I do can you please help me um, shutdown happened students were and, and imagine the first shutdown right it was hard and and crazy it was nothing there was no transportation and I was right. like you know these students are going to go away and I don't know we, we won't be able to finish what we started with them so can mm -hmm. we take them online uh, so within mm -hmm. a period of five days, we took everyone online. Um, Aryanth and Ajit, I'll, I'll get to their profiles, but they'd been working on a solution, on an enterprise grade sort of training and skilling solution uh, that they were basically offering to corporates. Uh, and they were like, okay, fine, you know, the, the platform is really ro robust. Let mm -hmm. me help you take these people online. So, uh, you know, and that really was this, the start of this partnership where we uh, like I said within a week got people online uh, we had BBC reach out to us talking to us how have you done this uh, again the government was reaching out to us the UGC was reaching out to us you know can you help us do this at scale we, we, we helped uh, a, a few universities to also onboard their students uh, mm. uh, to make this happen that you know uh, uh, again, I think we're all, they're all very, very comfortable with this at this point. Um, but mm -hmm. I think two years back, uh, you know, doing classes online, students interacting with them, giving them pre-reads, post-reads, everyone is sort of struggling. That change was harsh. I mean, now we're used yeah, to it. 
but I I'm sorry to interrupt you but I'm really intrigued to know um did you know your co-founders like prior to you starting Seco how did you meet them what was your relationship with them So um Aryan is a close family friend mm-hmm. um you know he and my husband have been friends forever uh so uh, you know you said that Aish I think for the past decade I've been struggling with this um it bothers me you know i think i've traveled across the country i've gone from university to university you know from from the iims to the iits uh, to a you know to a lpu lovely professional university which is a city and a town uh, <laughs> it, it, i mean it's unbelievable they have their own hospital uh, to an wow. itm in gwalior to uh, to the northeast to you know so i've really explored university seen it at that ground level seen the students there and then it bothers my soul that why is it when our education system tries so hard we've invested in infrastructure we've invested in the students why is it so hard for people to still get the right jobs right why are they still struggling and fighting about the ctc and the lpa kisi bhi college students se baat kar delhi university mein baat kar lo right ki <laughs> क्या करना है लाइक ओके यू हेल्प मी क्रैक अ जॉब आई लाइक बट यू नो यू आर इन एन एल एस आर और देश बंधु कॉलेज यू नो दिस इज एंड यू शुड बी एम्प्लॉयबल एंड एंड इवन कंपनीज आर स्ट्रगलिंग राइट एंड द कंपनीज आर स्ट्रगलिंग सो एंड यू नो इट्स सेफ एजुकेट आई वाज डूइंग इट एट अ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड बट आई लाइक वी नीड इट एट अ फिफ्टी लैक वन करोड़ लेवल एंड ये ब्रिक एंड मॉटर से नहीं होएगा यू नो ये सेंटर से नहीं होएगा देयर हैज टू बी अ टेक्नोलॉजी सॉल्यूशन सो आई आई वुड ऑलवेज कीप नजिंग आर्यन एंड अजीत दैट यू नो कैन यू हेल्प अस एंड यू नो एड टेक वाज नॉट समथिंग दैट वाज एक्साइटिंग एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई गिव यू अ बैकग्राउंड आर्यन वेंट इज ही वेंट टू स्टैंडफोर्ड ही वर्कड एट गूगल ही देन वाज एट आईएसबी एंड ही वाज द फाउंडिंग टीम फॉर हेल्थ कार्ड Ajit hmm. again is IIT Kanpur and he was the founding team for Healthcart that's where they met uh Ajit then wrote the code for 1MG uh you know the vi- the app that went viral it was a it was a saturday sunday project he was doing he had, you know let's make medicines accessible to all so and suddenly hmm. was a viral sort of app which is today Tata 1MG and literally helped all of right. us through this whole covid pandemic and uh, they decided to venture out on their own they did a small startup called johukum which was acquired by freshworks um freshworks ipo so it was uh, <laughs> a huge killing and after 2 years i think they got out and they set up uh, hmm. uh their second startup and at that point you know sequoia came on board the search fund and they like whatever you guys are doing we're in uh, we want in <laughs> we want in <laughs> we want in we want in we want we want a part of you uh and wow. you know like i said so they were experimenting with a uh, a saas platform that was looking at employ you know employee training so how do mm-hmm. you improve how do you train people and you know and it was a database platform where you know how do you train people but actually measure their uh productivity so okay. not just ki aapne training kar diya but how you know if i'm training you what is the increase in your productivity uh hmm. and then when you know and, and and so then that's when this happened and we suddenly we're like hey can we do this for students can we look at training people but can we do this where we actually measure their productivity and have that as a solution and and you know that clicks that suddenly makes sense mm-hmm. uh and that really is the genesis of seco is a data driven platform where you have a student or an employee you have a jd yaar aapke current uh, state and can we take it to uh the the final jd that a corporate wants and can i measure that so from the corporate side can i measure the jd what do you need and from the student side can i measure where you're at and just fill that gap how, how do you measure productivity like what do you mean that you measure productivity like what does it tangibly mean tangibly mean just in assessment right so if i'm looking at it in an employee level at uh, at say in a corporate and mm-hmm. if i say take a very simple example of a customer executive 
-hmm. I would say that how much time does it take for you to resolve a call pre-training versus after you've gone through a three hour training, what is, I mean, I'm very simplifying it, but then how much time mm -hmm. did it take you to do that? So I've increased your productivity by X, Y, Z, right? So mm -hmm. we've literally broken that down here. And what we say here is that we've broken this down in, uh, so if I talk about Seeker, we've taken academy wise approach. Um, we're saying that we're working on 10 academies at this point, uh, which is finance, product, consulting, uh, hmm. supply chain, marketing, um, what may happen. And within this, we're saying, okay, fine, these are the skills that you need to know. And let us teach you those skills. We'll assess you whether you know those skills mm -hmm. and you have proof of work and then connect that to a corporate, essentially. Interesting. But, but still at the, like, I've been running a company for almost 15, 16 months now. Biggest problem is hiring, right? Like I, I talk to any uh, founder friend, people are not able to find the right talent. Um, sometimes the skill doesn't match, sometimes the culture doesn't match, but it's a big problem. And we live in a country of billions of people. Where is this gap happening? If 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 we are trying to educate so and so many companies are trying to educate like so many people, right. if the education is happening, then still, why are we not seeing that radical shift in hiring? So deeper question, I can go philosoph uh, philosophical and I can go <laughs> practical. So I'll go both. Both. Let's, let's do uh, both. Huh? I'll do both. So why is this happening? Right? Philosophically, why is this happening? If you have any skill sets, Shayan, very truly, the skill sets that you need, uh, when the course was being the person was being taught, that requirement wasn't there. Right? Hmm. So the future of work is moving so quickly that by the time a course is created, curriculum is made and, you know, approved through their hoops of UGC <laughs> approval processes, you've taught that person, hey, what's up? The technology has changed. I'll talk right. about something very simple like a performance marketer. Today, mm. if you teach someone Google Ads, chances are at the end of six months when he's actually applying it, there are three more platforms that he needs to know. You know, Google has changed its algorithms and there are actually five new features that need to be introduced. And maybe the current structure of the education system, CBC, et cetera, that you're mm -hmm. working on is not allowing for that to get added. So very primarily, I'm saying that at some point, uh, the skill set requirement is moving very, very quickly. This was not the case 10 or 15 years ago, right? You would take one year to change a process. Still remember at Safe Express, when we entered, we, we never had timing, right? Everyone would work all mm -hmm. the time. So we actually said, okay, nine o'clock to seven o'clock. Would time ko nine sit saat karne me she mahine lag gaye the, right? Wo HR bolega, fir wo time hoega, fir koi mana karega, right? Like today, it's one email, hmm. right? And you're hmm. done. So we have to, at some point, be cognizant that the future of work is work has moved way faster uh, than education is geared uh, and put into place. Uh, two, let me talk about it practically. Um, you know, I, I know EdTech is working, everyone's been working. Like I said, I've been working in this ecosystem and uh, everyone's just always crying like the ecosystem's broken, ecosystem's broken because everyone works in silos. Um, uh, why social media has worked is because everyone talks to each other. You know, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, etc. People are talking to each other. At hmm. this point, unfortunately, uh, especially in hiring, different platforms and people are not talking to each other. The jobs are not in the same platform. They're not, like I said, the first thing I had to do in this skill ecosystem was come up with the skill hierarchy and make people agree to it. You know, product manager, ko kya chahiye ya? what are the skill sets that a product manager needs? Mm -hmm. Are we even agreeing to that, uh, to that nomenclature? So now what we've done at Seco, tomorrow you wanted to hire as a hiring manager, you would come and access the talent board of a product manager. Hmm. The talent board will actually have, will say, okay, fine. You know, every HR manager today is defining product manager in his own definition. Hmm. You know, sabki apni requirements hai. We've templatized that requirement and we've given that and we say, hey, you know what? These are the skill sets. Please decide what according to your communication is. 
राइट ग्रेट कम्युनिकेशन डज दैट मीन इंग्लिश में बोलना चाहिए डज दैट मीन यू शुड बी राइटिंग ग्रेट कॉपी यू नो डज दैट मीन यू शुड बी एबल टू टॉक टू सम वन इन टेन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज दैट्स अ वेरी डिफरेंट लेवल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन वी हैव एक्चुअली टेम्पलेटाइज दैट एंड आई यू कैन चूज इट राइट यू कैन से ओके फाइन दिस ग्रेट वन ग्रेट टू ग्रेट थ्री वी डिफाइन इट फॉर दैम and then mm. on the talent board he can then cut and dissect the talent board and see that hey you know what these are the thousand people on sikhu uh according to my needs and requirements these this is my top 50 10 20 30 30% percentile and this again is the ecosystem within the sikhu ecosystem people are also interacting with skills and content at that same level So now if I look at the Seco ecosystem what we have is a Seco Select membership uh you know and, and um I, I think we're all addicted to subscriptions at this point of time right <laughs> hot star netflix and this like right. subscription economy and hmm. and while in, initially you sort of question it eventually you realize that it makes life a lot easier so what we see hmm. is then within each category i have an academy i have a consulting academy i have a finance academy uh where you have again three pillars learning community and a leaderboard hmm right so baki shayad at tech companies um you know at the end of the day you already have coursera any hmm. kind of learning that you need you already have youtube all of that is already hmm. available so in my eyes learning is already commoditized there's nothing exciting in making a fantastic course on financial analyst because there's absolutely right. no way i'm going to be able to compete uh, what hbr and you know or 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 the greats of the world have done and i'm like why should i i would hmm. rather give that to you right i'd rather curate that for you uh, so my learning is a curated journey of learning uh, we get live uh industry experts to come and talk to you so within this you know sequo journey um it, it has live events live master classes we'll be talking to you solving your doubts uh so you have your basic theory which is curated maybe recorded sessions you'll have live live mentors who you can actually talk to figure out uh what's mm. happening you know get be in touch with current trends uh there's a community of like minded people so you're talking to them asking them questions you have an interview tomorrow as a financial analyst you can go there hey i have a i have an interview with bain can someone help me out <laughs> uh and Very believe cool. you me you're going to have people who will be like let's let's jump in for uh, for a mock interview uh, hmm. you can have you have mentors who are sort of helping you uh and, and all of this is creating a proof of work at some hmm. point uh and and there are assessments which actually take you to the talent board so then tomorrow when bain is coming to me they're like hey you know what these are the people who have been interacting with us uh hmm. and and we're connecting this ecosystem and you help them get jobs as well yes we we hmm. give access to uh to the corporates uh, so again so i have corporates hmm. who come on board and they're like hey can we get your students can we also get your mentors to hmm. come on board so it's sort of an ecosystem so- In terms of the mentors, so, we have hmm. over five hundred. Sorry. So here's what I'm un- understanding. Like, so, sorry to cut you off, but I'm, I want to quickly simplify things for the audience as well. So at the core, what we're doing is a. Firstly, we are redefining the curriculum. Right. What should be taught for what tangible skills, which will make you employable. Then Absolutely. comes the community angle where people learn from each other. Then comes the leaderboard, which is part of making it gamified, so that you get that kick and you get that excitement to learn. Then comes the part where um, you bring on these really um, impactful companies and you connect your uh, community members with them. Have I gotten the supply chain Absolutely. right? Absolutely, perfect. Superb. Now here is is uh, why I found this model really interesting. and while i love an academy and byju's and the entire schooling culture because that has given me a lot as a uh, as a person here's here's where my problem lies um after a point of time you realize that uh, people have been trying to over simplify learning whereas the process of learning is not simple learning in itself is very simple here's what i mean by this uh we try to make it very static ki uh k12 hoga uske baad college hoga and then stop learning stop you go to a job and that's how you aise karna hai but the truth is ki um, people don't learn like that everybody has a, a different way of learning some some people right. only learn on the job 
second for, for everybody the same curricular won't match so technically you're spending the first 22 23 years of of your life just following somebody else's vision of learning and now people have right. been trying to templateize it and i know why people templateize it because um uh, mentally speaking people people love to patternize things people love to put things into pattern because as humans we find it easier to comprehend but that's not cool <laughs> because yeah. Yeah, i am following somebody <laughs> else's pattern Absolutely. somebody wanted to somebody wanted to simplify things and wanted to uh, judge everybody from a simple so this is a, this is how I, how i uh, summarize learning i think learning was one person was very lazy and he was like how do we evaluate so many millions of folks so let's just define a paper which we call a degree and now we judge right. everybody through this degree but this is this is not how things should be because you can't expect millions of people to follow the same pattern every year right. and expect to churn out the best students and this is why i really like companies like seco are trying to redefine the curriculum now my question to you is there are now i see a divide in the edtech ecosystem and I, i don't know whether like both of these uh, sides will exist like coexist together but on one side there are companies like unacademy and byju's which have uh, democratized democratized the um, access to education right they've brought right. education to your phones um there are companies like let's say stoa school or or growth school all these companies which are trying to tell you courses uh, sell courses seco is is actually one of them they are they are doing the community play where you learn from each other and you learn tangible industry skills um my question is do you think it'll it'll be just you in the market or companies like you or do you still think companies which are trying to follow the same fixed curriculum will 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 continue to exist and it'll be like a harmony Um so here's what I feel I should have a great question um and I love the word of democratization of education <laughs> as bastardized as that word is <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh you know you need a fixed curriculum hmm. right you need you need the basics you can't write a book if you don't know abc right so i am at no point contesting a degree i'm not saying hmm. ki become mat karo i'm not saying don't be an engineer okay uh, i'm not saying that you know don't do k to 12 you need to you need to learn those alphabets but also that will never be enough right hmm. and, and more and more i feel that a degree will never be adequate to get you where you can where you want to be one mm -hmm. two it cannot learning cannot be static right you cannot have a dvd collection uh, of movies you need a netflix right because the consumption of information is increasing that world of saying hey you know this is a mixtape i got one uh, <laughs> 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 i used to be gift <laughs> wow but you can't gift someone uh, and since you you gave someone a mixed mixtape she'll be like yeah okay fine let's put it on the side <laughs> but really i think that's where we are at i think what seco is saying that mm -hmm. a mixtape is not enough you know an album is not enough you have to be mm -hmm. selling songs right uh, no one's buying what you know just because it's an album us me ko ek gana chahiye i don't want the rest of those eight songs so right. i think what we're doing at seco is unbundling it and personalizing it that hey hmm. in finance this is your personalized learning journey you want to be a finance analyst you're already from a bits you're already maybe hmm. from a great college um and you know xyz so hey what's up do an assessment and these are the certifications um and get to where you need to be and you know, you're there uh, keep keep this learning journey going on <laughs> so uh, so genuinely yeah. believe that at some point uh you know uh how do you make something cheaper right right um, okay uh, it's something called techno socialism which is technology se mm -hmm. socialism hota hai socialism okay. tabhi hota hai like socialism basically means that everyone has access to everything right mm. you have access to education it doesn't matter where you are what you are you know i i could be in bareilly i could be in gorakhpur but i can still aspire uh, for a kick ass job in finance in supply chain i can be a, amazing growth marketer uh, so hmm. i i'm giving access to everyone so i'm doing that by unbundling it uh, and making it accessible and cheap 
and, and you know, I think technology has done that for healthcare and for education. Um, and, and you know, and CICO is really trying to do that um, by, by spreading it out and saying that let's make this accessible, available. Hmm. Um, and like I said, I, you know, I, I think CICO is not for everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's for the student, it's for the person who has a growth mindset. Who is right. not okay with where he is? Who is not okay with current circumstances, situations? And you want to be better or the best. You want an edge, uh, hmm. and that really for me is the Seiko tribe, right? Like, how 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 do I question things as they exist? Uh, uh, and 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 to be honest, that's why I love this generation. I sound like a broken record, but <laughs> it is literally the hardest time that any generation or you know, we as adults are, are struggling. Right? Imagine a 17, 18, 20 year old, you know, about to go into college, and you're suddenly <laughs> on screen trying to do classes at nine hmm. uh, to one. It's one of the hardest time anyone's gone through. Mm. in in civil in in the history of mankind and this has made this generation incredibly resilient right mm. it's it's trained it to be innovative to you know uh, to do things differently and i think that's what excites us that uh, we're finally at a place where we can create uh, something that didn't exist before we can create a subscription that empowers you and actually mm -hmm. solves this problem of employability, of actually getting people to um, where they want to be, irrespective. And and, and you're not stuck ki, matlab, main is college mein tha, meri ye degree hai, to ab, you, ab know, milega, ab, you can change ab that. Ab milega. You can hmm. change that, you know. It, it, nothing it, hmm. is sort of fixed. <laughs> I, I have a personal question to ask. And um, this is something which, you know, there are some questions which which disturb you when you're trying to sleep and you're like, oh, I, I need to find answers to this question. I think today, replicating what a company is doing is not very difficult. Um, today, uh, build, somebody can come because we are in a bull run, there's a lot of money in the market. Somebody else, um, very, very competent, can get a lot of money, build something like Seiko. Um, I'm sure as an entrepreneur, you must have had this th thought some sometime right like he koi aa gaya seekho jaisa bana diya to hum kya karenge so two questions a in general you have you've run so many companies you've been in the corporate culture a how do you differentiate your company and how do you find your moat um so yeah i'll it's it's a lovely question and you know i think when i started off um i'll give you an example i started off uh, one of my first employees left and he joined the competition he took everything that we'd made yikes and uh, uh, and you know he's uh, uh, and, and they set up a parallel sort of safe educate I ran to my mm. father-in-law I'm like dad can we do a case on him he's like why what happened I was like he's stolen my entire playbook he's gonna create another company he's like yeah you know just um, that's not gonna happen and I was really upset Ayush I was really upset I was like why mm. is he not taking me seriously <laughs> and um, you know and I was like you know he, he obviously thinks what I'm doing is not serious and and to be honest, it never went anywhere. Um, so to be honest, I think taking a playbook and, and copying it is is easy. Um, but I think following through is hard because at the end of the day, what differentiates us is the why. Uh, our why is uh, very simple, um, very clean, but very hard, which is uh, we want to make people career ready. We want to make future proof uh, careers. So, uh, and also the, uh, if you look at the back end in terms of actually baking, you know, basing this on a skill hierarchy uh, is something I feel which is uniquely us and us. Uh, the other two things is just, I think, culture. Uh, for us, for me, I think our students, uh, my secret tribe is what is core. And we talk, every feature that we talk about is based mm. on that. Right? Will it help uh, my Seiko user get to where he or she needs to be or aspires to be? And if it doesn't, we're not mm -hmm. doing that. So I think culture really differentiates. Um, and mm. finally, I think the founding team, it's an incredible mm. founding team. 
uh, not just between me, Arya and Tajit, but even if you go into uh, Shrey, who's managing product for us, uh, hmm. Yash, Sahil, it is uh, a founding team like this, uh, keeping them together. We literally have uh, we literally have fights when we're trying to come up with a product feature because mm -hmm. everyone is so, uh, I think, <laughs> um, bought into this idea um, mm. and, and putting this together. Uh, is huge. So I think that's a little bit um, philosophically, uh, practically mm -hmm. speaking, I think getting this ecosystem together of the right mentors, of the right, uh, you know, skill, uh, the, the students, uh, it, uh, and of course, uh, the tech around that is mm. a huge moat. Is, is there a process to, to finding your why? Like, is there a series of questions that I as um, a student or as an aspiring entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur that I can ask myself that these are some questions that I need to ask to understand what my why is. Absolutely. So in fact, um, we did this amazing uh, journey. We uh, we funded by Sequoia um, mm -hmm. and uh, we actually had, um, in fact, the CMO of Sequoia, Guy 3 and Oliver, so I mean, they're fabulous. Uh, so, I mean, everyone, I think, is fascinated with this idea of SQL and the subscription model. And I think everyone genuinely believes that the subscription model is what this career uh, segment uh, needs. So we were trying to define this. And, and you know, I think uh, uh, one of the questions that they asked, and, and, and this was it, it was like, start with the why. And a lot of times that when, when we talk about it, it's like, what is SQL? You very automatically jump to the what. Right? What is SQL? What is OWL? Uh, what is SQL? It is a low cost platform that is broken into academies that provides you X, Y, Z, and you're really focused right. just on the features. But if I drill back deeper, I'll be like, how I'm creating a platform that is bringing, you know, employers, mm. mentors, and students together. But essentially, I think it is Hugh Like, what mm. are you doing it? Um, and I think what's been interesting for us is fundamentally, why did you build SQL? Right? Why during COVID, right? Why post COVID did Aryan and Ajit and Divya decide ki SQL ko kyu build kare, kyu need kare? Uh, and what is that problem that you're trying to solve? And I think if you keep asking that question and then, uh, and, and I'll tell you this journey, Ayush, it started with, we want people to win. And like, I was like, that's not working. <laughs> then we're like, we want to change the status quo. We're like, hmm. literally any company can say that, right? Right. Like, hmm. a phone company, they close, everyone's trying to change the status quo. So till you hmm. come to that why answer that is uniquely yours. And two, and very interestingly, polarizing. Right? There should hmm. be certain people who don't believe in it. There will be so many people, Ayush, who will say, what is this SQL? Why can't, why are you not giving me certification? <laughs> you should be giving me a degree, right? So uh, I think the fact that we're able to polarize people and, and uniquely stand for something. So I think for every entrepreneur, anyone who's starting out, if you're drafting your why, uh, you need to choose your tribe. And it's very hard. It's very hard. If you're like, Achha, lekin phir wo wali target market reh jai, right? <laughs> and it's okay. Right. You know, decide mm. who you're not catering to and, and be okay with that. I think that's very powerful. Um, when we started off, uh, we, we thought, okay, this, this service is technically like we can sell it to any company and every company out yeah. there, right? Like they could be a B2C platform. They could be a, they could be a B2B company. They could be like a uh, hundred year old legacy uh, company that has been going on or could be like a very new startup, which is just six months old. But we realized that that's, that's not the way to go. Um, right. It brings a lot of confusion and, and B you're never able to focus. And when you're not able to focus, um, you, you spread yourself too thin. Um, so I definitely agree with you there. I okay. How how much is is Seiko worth to today? Like what? How many millions of dollars is is the uh, valuation of the company? I am not sure if I'm allowed to <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> okay. We are Give us a rough number. Hmm. Oh, so you're raising another Double round. Digit. 
ഹാപ്പി <laughs> I I've just started out right I want to understand ki kitna zaruri hona chahiye paisa aapke liye um because I I don't believe in the narrative that money is not important at all I I don't believe in it at all agar agar hota to tum itna zyada uh, mehnat nahi kar rahe hote towards a money driven capitalistic game I want to understand a how important money is and how important it should be So agar aaj bahut zyada should it not be this important should you be primarily focused on impact or is it okay to be money focused and money driven and and help people create a lot of impact on the side Oh wow that's an amazing question and I'm actually shockingly and again maybe I've gone through that journey where mm-hmm. I think initially everything was about check check boxes <laughs> uh you know it was about creating a massive balance sheet and um So how important is money money is incredibly important because money eventually gives you freedom right mm. and when you have freedom that's when you can do things that you want so agar aapke paas freedom nahi hai to bolna aasan hai but you cannot really operate so to say that hey you know you should work for free or not and ultimately you know why is money created why was money created in society Hmm. society gives money to whatever it values it hmm. values your skill then why do influencers and oh my god i've got so much of this where people are like oh influencers these days are spoiled they get so much money i was hmm. like they're getting money because they've created some value to companies right. to society it's not for free right if i'm paying you know money for this bottle of water because there is value in getting clean water that mm-hmm. i aspire for so at the end of the day we have to understand that money is incredibly important but money mm-hmm. is given for value you will not get money for doing things that the society doesn't value it might be a short term bubble you might be able to trade or get lucky for a minute 5 minutes a week two weeks right but jab tak aap kisi ko help nahi kar rahe ho something that someone drastically needs um it's not going to work so i think mm. for me that's a really good value of creating anything um and finally if you look at that that you know if you and, and if that is true that if you're looking at um uh, and then when you're looking at that need money also helps you quantify it now if i look at this whole startup game and um I think it's a really interesting perspective because I've been in a large corporate I've done my own startup which was brick and mortar where we actually understood cash flows and now mm-hmm. I'm running a completely uh you know numbers driven startup mm. where right. uh, you know revenue is almost an afterthought um mm. I, I, but at the end of the day what hasn't changed Ayush is value right yahan pe shayad revenue nahi dekh rahe hain right at this point i'm not if i'm doing a subscription at 100 rupees you know i, I, I have 15000 i have 100 live classes of course i'm burning right? right but i am not so i might not be looking at revenue but the one thing i have not compromised is on value hmm. ki wo jo mere student aa raha hai wo what is he taking back is the outcome still there so at any money driven game at any uh at, at any business that you're running at mm-hmm. some level uh you need to understand how are you quantifying this value you might be quantifying it in the money you're getting in you might mm-hmm. be quantifying it in your nps you might be quantifying in your engagement you might be quantifying it in your completion rates but you need to be able to quantify that because 
otherwise there's uh, if you don't have a goal then how do you reach it right that makes a lot of sense i think changing the perspective from just looking at it as a like money as a capitalistic tool into value makes makes a lot of sense it this is one thing which which really bothers me another risk of sounding cliched uh, people call you a woman entrepreneur but they would call me an entrepreneur and this is and i'll tell you when it starts to bother me because this is 2022 i see these blogs where some funding announcement is there some impact that a woman entrepreneur has created again these are articles written by women on platforms that are run by people who are extremely forward looking still women entrepreneurs is this something which um and i'm genuinely curious is this something that women want or is it as irritating to you as as it is to somebody who's reading it that why is this differentiation happening interesting i i'm, I'm wondering how to answer this um i'm not a feminist okay right? i'm uh, i'm actually not a feminist um uh, mm-hmm. i don't think uh, i need to be helped Uh, I was mm-hmm. always sort of, um, and like I think a lot of women uh, today, uh, I was always given an equal platform. Uh, I mean, maybe I was given more of an advantage over my brother uh, mm-hmm. than not. Um, but does it bother me? No, it doesn't. You know, I think if I go back, uh, you know, traditionally we we still are a society where. a women's job was not to work uh, or not to run a career or not mm-hmm. to start companies now what that means is agar aapka kaam if if it's not your job to work then your job is to do everything else right mm. so it's your job to sort of look after the house take care of the kids etc Right. Uh, so at that point of time why people have accepted that hey you know what you can have women entrepreneurs mm-hmm. you know the opposite shift of you know just because i'm managing i'm running a, an entrepreneur i'm an entrepreneur managing a company mm-hmm. uh, at some level the primary responsibility of running the house and family mm-hmm. uh, is unconsciously still a woman's so mm-hmm. you know at some level i feel there is there is i mean it, it is Uh, you know do people not take you seriously when you're in a corporate world not not at all you know i think that is completely changed do they think that you're not capable no not at all do i look at a young woman entrepreneur or do i look at a young a young product manager and think that a woman is better than a man no not at all but is you know when when you look back and when you put social and professional together is there a lot more on a woman's plate than a man's possibly so i think that correction of society is needed uh, in terms of mm-hmm. the societal mindset um and, and if that means that someone gets given an advantage uh in the short period of time then mm-hmm. sure go for it uh, unfortunately mm-hmm. of course i think what does happen is the advantage the people who already have the advantage uh get to mm-hmm. you know it, it's like with reservations right Right. It's like mm. who who are who people who have already got uh, the mm-hmm. advantage maybe you know get a a larger share of that, um, mm-hmm. but I think it just puts the onus on us. I mean, on me, on you, um, mm-hmm. in terms of helping more women, more entrepreneurs. Uh, I do nice. feel the women workforce is underrepresented across board. Mm-hmm. So you know, I I think if we can just be more cognizant more aware hmm. put yourself out there and women need to be more demanding i mean i i, I hmm. think as we need to ask for more demand more generally uh, hmm. i don't think people should be speaking up for us but we need to be speaking up for ourselves uh, hmm. say call out call out the bullshit uh, you know uh, you know we're very nice and we're very happy when we get when we get the accolades but but mm. very slow in calling out the bullshit so mm. i think we need to be out there more uh to point out stuff that doesn't work and that's wrong so so i'm i just want to get this right so you're saying putting that woman in front of that wom- like the word entrepreneur actually helps in the short term um no not really it doesn't i think it's just mark mm. yeah it's just marketing and pr uh, it's mm-hmm. a diversity quota 
uh, is it mm. really helping a woman entrepreneur does it help me run this company more i don't I, it's never helped me and does it demean you no no it doesn't i mean me it does uh, not really it's uh, mm. uh, at the end of the day i think everyone has a tag that you're fighting against right uh, at the end of the day you just have to walk the walk talk the talk mm. i think all of us have labels that we are fighting right um, right oh, a digital <laughs> entrepreneur is as a digital creator even a thing right so i think these are mm. tags that uh, irrespective of who what where you are you'll always get tagged and i i think it's kind of fun you know i actually <laughs> love challenging uh, my mm. tags i love redefining them Uh, I love playing around with them and being like, "Oh, how can I tweak this and and make it more interesting, <laughs> less interesting?" <laughs> Very cool. Before we wrap this episode, uh, I know a lot of people who want to fast track their career are, are watching this, right? And that's that's been your mission as well. Um, what are some three, four things that you think any college student or somebody who is probably two, three years into their corporate career do to fast track and boost their career? Join the Seeker subscription. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh so no i think uh, the first thing is that um you need to lose the idea of time you know i need you need to stop thinking in terms of time ek saal do saal teen saal panch saal right uh, time is your friend it's not your enemy so stop putting career goals in terms of main ek saal mein idhar pahunchunga do saal mein idhar pahunchunga um uh, so so that's my first thing i mean i started mm-hmm. seeko at 38 uh, can't believe i'm telling my age but yeah so there is no <laughs> right time there is no wrong time you are not late you are not there is no race so there's okay. absolutely no race so stop being um so scared right you mm. have forever uh to invest in yourself right invest in figuring out what you like what you enjoy uh learn with just the sake of learning um what does that mean you know be involved with whatever's around you on social media um across things um i always believe in bias to action right karo karne se seekhte hain hum log sochte reh jate hain we keep thinking right i mean uh, right three companies 100 projects current model of seeko we've gone through 100 iterations you are only seeing the final product which is amazing so right. just bias to action if you are in college get out there get an internship internship nahi mil rahi hai life project karo life hmm. project nahi ho raha go to your neighborhood you know um, shelter and help out anything you do is going to help you grow uh third and fourth curate the information and the people that you have access to apne aap nahi hota hai right garbage in garbage out you have to curate right curate right. what you are learning what you are reading i mean i i very simply say if nothing else go on twitter delete everything figure out 100 people start following them you know on your linkedin curate your feed on instagram curate your feed jo aap dekhoge hmm. woh hi sikhoge finally access access is not going to come on its own right people are like oh shit i want this amazing job you need to create that access if you are working you want a job in an amazing company curate that network you know be friends with people who are product managers who are doing things things don't work in oblivion right but you can't right. sit in a box and then tomorrow like i mean if i talk about starting seeko seeko hmm. happened because i was talking to an aryan and ajit If I wasn't, and if I was in my shell, let's say, educate, how do you how do you create a, a tech company that today have lacks of students, right? You can't do that wow. if you stay in a shell. So, um, yeah. Um, wow. Simple. It's not that complicated. I think we overcomplicate. I think you I, I like what you you, you have with. simplified it. I think you have simplified it. It's not easy to simplify what you just did. Um, like I think these four pointers are ex. extremely strong and i can relate to all of them so much because all of all of these things have somehow helped me as well at some point in my life um yeah i think that was a great way to to end this 
Super. Uh, Divya, thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. I had so much fun, and I am. I'm. So so. Here's how I judge anything in life. If somebody makes me think something, I'm like, this is good. And this conversation is is making me think so many things. I'm going back to my. I'll be home here, but I'm going back home <laughs> metaphorically with a lot of thoughts and a lot of questions that. I'm sure I'm gonna ping you and bug you with that. That what do you please, think about this please. and what do you think about that? Please. But it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thanks for taking out the time, and I'm sure the audience loved it. They really enjoyed it. If you have anything uh, that you would want to say before you leave, now is the time. Awesome. But thank you so much, Ayush. I love this. I love this format. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the questions you've asked. It makes me <laughs> clarify. what i'm doing why i'm doing and how i'm doing it so uh, honestly it's uh, and the clearer i feel that i am and we are about our vision it just makes mm -hmm. me uh, closer to a reality but um, but uh, like i said i think i dream uh, or i've made seeko to really mm -hmm. create a world that i want my nuran zahan to grow up into and wow. uh, i'm so excited to have you Um, be a part of this. Be a part of uh, my trip. Very excited <laughs> uh, and excited to make this happen for this generation and, and those beyond. Likewise, this was this is really exciting. I I just wish we can help you in any way possible, and it was so so nice having you on the show. Thank you so much. Pleasure.